Hey there friends, Dave Politis, Game Missing Project, copyrighted edition for a video channel. Thanks for being here. And this is a missing person segment. And this is an up close and personal edition that uh, focuses on just one case. Before I get started, I get a lot of questions about Skinwalker Ranch. And I have talked at length about that show. I've given tons of videos about it. I've complimented the team that's at the ranch. Uh, I've complimented Brandon, the owner of the ranch, as someone who has taken his own personal money and poured it into trying to understand science. I compliment him for that. And I know a lot of you have said, well, Dave, why don't why don't you get out there? Not my role. Not my role. Brandon's in charge of that investigation and uh, Travis Taylor and those two can take care of it. But there's things that are happening around that ranch and I'm sure they don't know. And that's what this case is about. If you go back in time, things have been happening in that Uinta Valley for over 100 years, probably 200 years. And I've been asked many times if I could ever attribute a case to Skinwalker Ranch, a missing persons case. That's a hard thing to do, but if there was a case that appears to be as closely related as any case could, this is it. Now, you need to understand the profile points. When George Knapp first told me about Skinwalker Ranch after he went out there, the first question I asked him, I said, is there a large body of water right next to that ranch? Because I'd never heard of it before. And there was long hesitation on the phone. Because yeah, Dave, as a matter of fact, there is. Bottle Hollow Reservoir. It's a man-made reservoir. And he goes, that's an interesting question. Why'd you say that? I said, because one of the primary points on all missing persons cases is water. And I believe that almost all UFOs are really USOs, underwater submerged objects. And they use the water to hide. I've always thought that. So Bottle Hollow Reservoir, right next to Skinwalker Ranch. And the Ute Reservation, they have a long history of beliefs with that ranch. Now there was an article on March 17th of 2023 about Skinwalker Ranch. Here's what it says. Located in the Uinta Basin, this paranormal hotspot boasts claims of flying saucers, mysterious lights, unknown illnesses, shape-shifting monsters, and just about everything else you can think of. It's so well known, in fact, that there have been several books written about the property and it's even its subject of a History Channel show now. But how did this patch of land in Eastern Utah gain no worldwide notoriety? And how many of its strange stories are worth believing? The second question is easy to answer, but we'll let you make up your own mind on the second one. History of Skinwalker Ranch, the Utes and the Navajo. The earliest known inhabitants of this land played a big part in its ominous name. The property lies on land traditionally inhabited by the Ute tribe, but the term skinwalker comes from Navajo legend and translates to, quote, by means of it, it goes on all fours. In Navajo culture, skinwalkers are evil witches with the ability to shapeshift into any animal or human. The skinwalker legend is not well understood outside the Navajo tribe. But what little is known about it by outsiders is enough to inspire scary stories by all varieties. One such story involves the Ute tribe. The legend goes that during a time of hostility between the Utes and the Navajo, members of the Navajo decided to unleash skinwalkers upon their enemies, and those skinwalkers still stalk the land today. Again, article utah.com, March 17th this year. This the Utes have 
a long history with this land. Obviously, they lived on it. And then the Navajo and the Utes didn't get along. And thus the Skinwalker name has hung around the Utes forever. And the ranch. If you don't know a lot about the ranch, there's been animal abductions, there's been animals moved, there's been animals mutilated. There's been things moved inside of the house. Uh, people working at the ranch have had straight, strange radiation burdens. There's been UFOs seen on and on and on. Is it a strange place? No doubt. Now, let's go to missing 411, the UFO connection. Case in there about a man who was hunting who got abducted with physical evidence. Hardly any abduction cases have physical evidence. He had it. He shot. He could see the bullet come out the end of his gun. He was shooting at some elk out the end of the gun. It stopped, hit something, fell to the ground. He reached over, picked it up, saw an alien standing there, got abducted, and then he was dropped after they didn't want him anymore in the middle of his hunting ground. He ended up finding his truck in an area that he did not park it. Remember these facts. These are important. Now, where did this happen? So, this is an area of Utah, far, far northeast Utah. And this is Fort Duchesne. Here's the reservoir I spoke about. Here's Skinwalker Ranch. Skinwalker Ranch right there. And this is Roosevelt, Utah. All right. The story deals with a man named Clifford Sarawap, 60 years old. He went missing January 1st, 1995. He was a Ute tribal elder born on August 4th, 1924. He ended up marrying his wife named Amelia, who eventually died in 73. And Clifford was a good man. He was a U.S. Army vet. He had a brother. He actually had two brothers. He loved hunting and fishing, was considered an outdoorsman. He enjoyed watching basketball and softball, and he had three children. And he lived in the city of Ranlet, Utah. When I read that, my ears perked up, my eyes opened, and I said, okay. Now, why is that important? Ranlet is right next to Skinwalker Ranch. And I mean, right there. Hold the thought. Well, on December 31st, 94, Clifford went and he met a bunch of friends at a place called the Bottle Hollow Lounge. Yes, the same name as the reservoir we just talked about. At about 12.15 a.m. on January 1st, 95, going into the next morning, Clifford said goodbye to his friends and they saw him enter his, pay attention, 1979 light blue GMC pickup with a license plate of 675 George Zebra X-Ray. And they saw him driving eastbound on Highway 40 towards his residence. Okay, important points here, folks. Very important points. Here's Highway 40 right here. He's seen driving eastbound Highway 40 towards Fort Duchesne and eventually his home here in Ranlet. Right next to Ran, right, I mean, right there is Skinwalker Ranch. Bottle Hollow Reservoir. You kind of get the layout. Got it? Good? All right. That is Clifford. 
Well, on January 1st, 95, at about noon, his family realized Clifford wasn't home. They searched around, couldn't find his truck. Searched around, ran left, couldn't find the truck. And they started to drive around their own, in their own cars, looking for their dad's truck. Pretty big target. And when you're missing somewhere, and you're with a vehicle, stay with the vehicle. Vehicles can be found from the air. They can be seen real easily. You always want to stay with the car. So many cases where people were found dead away from the car trying to hike out and searchers found the vehicle first. It's an important point. So his relatives drove around Fort Duchesne, Ranlette, Ballard, Roosevelt. They all searched that area for a couple days, asking friends if they'd seen their dad, where he might be, went back to the friends that were at the lounge, confirmed he got in the truck, nobody was with him, had enough gas to get home. Did he get home? Nobody was even sure, sure. So they contacted the Bureau of Indian Affairs. On Native American reservations, on larger ones, there's usually a BIA office, Bureau of Indian Affairs. And the BIA has their own police department. And they notify BIA of the missing Ute elder, elder Clifford. The family told the police that Clifford was very sharp. He'd never wandered or drove away aimlessly in the past. A brother named Bobby stated that Clifford always stayed close with the family and would never wander away, ever. People did confirm that Clifford was drinking New Year's Eve, but nobody believed that he wouldn't be able to find his way home. About this time, while the family's going public with this, the U tribe made a public statement, and the quote is, this is a true mystery. Here's what you need to imagine. You've got a dad good person, good American, who disappears, coming home some, some night. Now, why did Dave make a big deal? Because he lived right next to Skinwalker Ranch? Well, if you haven't been watching that show, then you may not understand. But there's a lot of strange stuff that goes on around there. And it's not confined just to the property on the ranch. There's been strange things that have happened at all areas around that property. And if you've watched that so you show, you members have come forward and said exactly that. Well, the family went to the BIA. They were slow to engage, but they finally did. In November 10th through the 11th, they flew the entire Uinta Valley several times on a grid. looking for that pickup. Again, 79 light blue GMC pickup, 675 George Zebra X-ray. Well, two days of looking, and they feel that they had the entire valley covered. And there was also notations that weather kept them grounded for a couple days, so they had to bounce them back to other days, weather issue. But the BIA put out a worldwide BOL on that license plate on Clifford's truck, meaning if he stopped, law enforcement needs to do follow-up to make sure he's okay, make sure it's, he's the one in the driver's seat, contact the family, contact BIA in Utah. On the 14th and the 15th of January, the BIA got specialized search dogs from other parts of Utah to come onto Clifford's property they went to the lounge and they went to other locations that he was known to frequent and they tried to put the dogs on his scent. Dogs never picked up a scent. 
anywhere, which is very odd. And then on January 31st, the BIA stated the disappearance may be related to foul play. Now, if you've been following missing 411 cases for a long time, you know that when a case starts to go stale after a month, law enforcement starts talking foul play and other, op other options. Well, a witness had come forward and stated that they saw Clifford within the last three weeks at a 7-Eleven gas station in the valley with another man. And they gave the description. But about that time, Clifford's family posted a $1,000 reward for him. Well, simultaneously to this, all the newspapers started to jump on the foul play idea. Now, there was never any confirmation that they did see Clifford, but they thought the truck looked familiar, thought the people looked familiar. Typical, so typical of cases. And I would say 90% of the time when I read about this, it turns out to be untrue. Now, the family kept searching, kept looking, thinking that they're going to find this truck just around the next bend. Again, a truck, a pickup truck is not that easy to hide, folks. Well, through January and February, there were formal and informal searches, and nobody was finding anything. And many of the articles used the words baffling and mysterious. Just saying. Now, if you knew the history of that valley, like I do, and many of you know, you have to start thinking, could it be related to the ranch? He lived right next to it? I don't know. He was somebody who always stayed close to home and town. He didn't wander away. Made no sense. Now remember, he's last seen going eastbound on Highway 40 towards his home. So he's last seen going eastbound on Highway 40 and then going down to his home in Randlett. Eastbound. Key points, eastbound. He knew the direction to his home. After he left that bar, there was no mistake. He knew. Well, nothing happens on the case for another month. February 21st, 1995. It had snowed a lot the previous month, two months. And a man named Lee Boren was taking snow measurements for the tribe. The tribe monitored the snowpack to understand the water that they would have for the coming year. And he was on horseback, horseback, measuring snow depths 20 miles northwest of Roosevelt in a place called Tower Ridge. Remote area, very remote. As Lee's riding along, he comes across this very strange sight. He sees a truck in deep snow. And he looked at it and he said, I shouldn't be here. And he rode around and he saw a body there. So obviously the truck had been there a long time. Obviously the body had been there a long time. And he thought he recognized the truck as belonging to Clifford. So he rode down to the Indian Affairs office, got them, and brought them back. Tribal police immediately called the FBI because they had started to be involved in this case because of the possibility of something illegal going on. Now, just so you understand, the FBI is the investigative arm for the BIA, both federal agencies. Well, there was an FBI special agent named McFeeters that was in charge. And he was the one that had the crime scene. And it is a crime scene until it's proven otherwise. So what I'm going to tell you came out of multiple articles was extremely hard to believe 
I read each article probably five times. And there were probably five different articles that all reported something almost exactly the same. If you're a follower of Missing 411, you're going to get this real quick. So McFeeters was the first report that the body was Clifford's. Okay. The door to the truck was open. Well, he disappeared on January, in January. Cold, cold night. Why would the door to the truck be open? Cold night. But it was open. He was outside the truck, kneeling on his knees, and his head was laying on the floorboard. When I heard this, it almost reminds me of a praying. Position. But, lying on the floorboard, his head. It was also reported he had no socks on and he really had no shoes on with one shoe partially on. Friends, I don't care who you are, that's strange. And he's only wearing a t-shirt and pants. No sign of violence. And he had $160 in cash on him, so there was no robbery. Here's some of the weird, weird stuff. The family asked to ID some of the clothes that Clifford was wearing. The family could only ID some of those clothes and some they'd never seen before. The FBI stated that they thought he tried to start a fire. He had a CB in his truck and it was on channel nine, which is emergency channel. But he was in a slight depression and the transmitter wouldn't go outside the valley. Now they couldn't prove that he actually tried to use the CB, but they found it unusual it was on channel nine. Family asked him how many times Clifford had been to this area on tower. They said never, he'd never gone up there. 20 miles outside the valley, desolate, desolate area. No, he didn't go there. Well, that's pretty, that's an assertive statement. The FBI said, FBI said that there was no obvious signs of violence. Okay. But then they also had the truck impounded and sent to their forensic office for examination. That's pretty odd. I mean, the FBI has a lot of things to do than to say, take some Native American's truck and impound it, then get a search warrant and search it. If there's no violence, what are they searching for? The family stated in a news article, the reason Clifford was in that area is a real mystery. Yeah, I'd say so. He was going eastbound and then he turns around somewhere and goes westbound for over 20 miles up into the mountains in the middle of nowhere in the middle of the night. Hard to believe. But what's even harder to believe? McFeeters made a statement that it was extremely difficult to get into the position that the truck was in, even if it had been dry conditions when he had arrived. Can I get what he's saying? He's having a tough time understanding how that truck got here. A horse got there, but how'd that truck get here? Paying attention? I looked high and low. There was an obituary for Clifford, but no cause of death was ever released that I could find. Now, the truck was obviously in a location that nobody expected. Very similar to Carl in the UFO connection. Remember that? His truck wasn't where he parked it. It was in an entirely different position. Missing socks, only one shoe partially on. That's very odd. 
People don't do that, especially when it's cold. So he's last seen going eastbound on Highway 40, found very far from his home in the opposite direction. The FBI stated that there was no foul play, but they took the truck, stated that the investigation was continuing. I read that three times. Continuing for what? You see, I think the FBI knows a lot more than what they're saying. There's a lot of crime on the reservation, don't get me wrong. I get that. But if this was a criminal act, it's a flat out guarantee. Clifford's money would have been gone. And if it was a criminal act, Clifford would have injuries consistent with murder, defending himself in a robbery, etc. But none of that existed. Now, some of you may think, well, Dave, you know, that's a real far stretch for you, but, but let's stick to the facts. Facts. Profile points. Water. Didn't get past me that the lounge he was at was called Bottle Hollow Lounge. Hmm. It's quite a coincidence, since the primary water source for that area, for recreation, etc., is Bottle Hollow Reservoir, right next to Skinwalker Ranch. And he lived right next to Skinwalker Ranch, just within a mile. Missing clothing, missing shoes. Weather inhibited the search. And search and rescue team said that they had flown over that area during their search. And they tried to make up some possible excuses, but none of it made any sense why they hadn't seen that truck. I think the case is unusual for all the things that, all the reasons I'm saying. And I think the FBI realized this case was unusual. There's only been a handful of males that have disappeared on a reservation and were later found under unusual circumstances, and I've written about them. I'm not afraid to, to hit this directly head on. Everything I read about Clifford, he's a good person. He served his country. He's a good American. He wasn't trying to get into trouble. He was trying to avoid trouble. And while leaving a bar one night, something found him. Trouble found him. Again, his family stated he had never been to that area. So in the middle of the night, freezing conditions, he's going to go driving up a mountain he's never been on? Doesn't sound right, does it? No. So, this is the case of Clifford Sarawap, adjacent to Skinwalker Ranch. There's a lot of things about the ranch they still don't know, which is why they're still investigating. Now, if there's a, a portal there, then it would be very easy to move a person from one location to another, to abduct a person and carry them away because portals are used for traversing galaxies, according to astronomers. So the ability to move a car wouldn't seem to be outside the realm of reality. Yes, saying. So I appreciate you being here. Thanks for paying attention to the case. And I would greatly appreciate this if you send it on to your social media, copy people who may be interested, and uh, I greatly appreciate you for being here. And when you're out in the community, do something nice for the community. See somebody in need, help them. Maybe donate some food to the food shelter because there's a lot of people in need out there, folks. A lot. So. 
In the meantime, be safe. Politis out.